So I'm guessing you're here for one of three reasons. Either you have decided to buy some sort of vehicle that when you start it up on a cold day, it takes about half an hour for it to get even vaguely warm. Perhaps you've decided to do some winter camping, which frankly, you'd have to be kind of mad for in this country, but you've decided it's going to be a good idea anyway. Or like me, you can answer yes to both one and two. So I've been using diesel heaters on a number of my vehicles for quite a few years now. Not only have I used diesel heaters, I've used LPG heaters, I've used petrol heaters, and I've also used electric heaters. Now there are drawbacks to all of those, and I'm gonna let you know which I think is the best, have a guess, and uh, what some of the drawbacks are with the other systems. Not only that, but let's also talk about branded versus Chinese. Now a big question for a lot of you guys will be, should I get a two kilowatt one or should I buy that really cheap five kilowatt heater I've seen on eBay or Amazon that's just gonna keep me warmer? Well, here's the truth. For a van of this size or generally any camper that you're gonna be using, a two kilowatt heater is more than enough. If you decide to go for a five kilowatt heater and you have a vehicle about this size or even up to a crafter, you are not gonna have a vehicle to camp in anymore. You are just gonna have a mobile sauna and no one wants that at all. The five kilowatt heater systems, although they do produce a lot of heat, aren't very manageable in terms of the temperature that you can keep them at. Even on their lowest settings, if you are out sleeping in your vehicle, you are gonna find you're gonna to need to crack open or push your doors wide open within about 10 minutes because it is gonna get extremely hot in there. So first question on what size heater you want, two kilowatt for any vehicle generally under 21 feet long. And if it's over that, then you may, may wanna consider the five kilowatt, but go into it with your eyes wide open. So this 110 is fitted with an Eberspacher two kilowatt diesel heater system. This system is absolutely perfect for this size of vehicle. Personally, I've used Chinese systems in the past and I've never really had too much of an issue with them. The biggest problem with Chinese systems is usually getting spare parts if your system breaks down. Not only that, unlike the German systems, the Chinese systems don't usually have as many diagnostics, so it's harder to diagnose what is going wrong with your system if and when it fails. So what have I learned cost-wise from fitting Chinese systems versus getting branded systems? Well, personally now, I would rather go and get a second-hand branded system over a Chinese system. You can pick up a Chinese diesel heater, I think now for literally about 70 or 80 bucks. And yeah, if you go for branded, you are gonna be paying up to a thousand pounds, but on the second-hand market, if you find a reputable dealer, you can pick up a good system like the one that's fitted in this car for as cheap as 250 bucks. So you've got a few different fuel types that you consider. Maybe you've got a petrol car and you're thinking of plumbing straight into that and getting a petrol or LPG system. I want you to just take a couple of things into consideration first. My split screen has a petrol night heater on it. Would I choose that if I was fitting it myself over a diesel system with a separate tank? Probably not. And the reason is, if you're in the middle of nowhere in your toasty warm camper van and you get even the slightest leak on your LPG or petrol system, and for some reason, let's say you have the exhaust pumping out heat on your night heater and there is any sort of heat coming off that, you stand a very, very good chance of going from nice and toasty warm in your camper van to being a little bit hotter and slightly more burnt if it explodes on you. And that's the great thing about diesel. You have to vaporize it before it can combust. Unlike petrol, which you can literally throw a match at and it's gonna blow up straight away. That is a consideration that I would definitely consider if I was gonna go petrol or diesel. 
Now, something that's definitely worth taking into consideration when you are thinking about fitting one of these systems, and you have just spanked a small fortune on it, is how much is it actually gonna cost you to run? On a good diesel system, you could use as little as 0.2 liters per hour heating yourself, which is an absolutely fantastic cost. And even on the cheapest Chinese diesel systems, you're still only gonna be using just over half a liter a night. If you compare that cost at its most expensive versus a night in a hotel, you're still gonna be saving yourself money. Now, the other fuel that you're going to use when you're heating yourself in your van at night isn't just your diesel, it's the electric that you're gonna be using. And this is a totally valid question. Now, I'm not an electrician and I'm not gonna get into the ins and outs of just how much power these systems draw over a night, but personally, when I've used these systems, on my voltmeter, I will watch my volts on my leisure battery drop from around about 12.7, to 12.4, which is still way, way, way over what you need to crank your car if you're running this off of your starter battery. So if you only have the budget for a starter battery, I would still say that you can easily fit one of these systems in your vehicle, heat yourself all night, and not really worry about waking up in the morning to a flat battery. Now, having said that, every single heater system I have in any of my camper vans is always connected to a leisure battery, just in case. If by any chance you're finding that you're enjoying this video, remember to hit subscribe because I would absolutely love your support. So you've just found the perfect spot for your first night in your camper van, and you ask yourself, how long do I need to keep this on for to get warm and to stay warm. Seriously, I don't care how much silver bubble wrap you have used, how much expanding foam you've used, or what sort of special sheep's wool you have used, you are still going to get freezing. Do one of two things, either get an absolutely epic sleeping bag like I have, or run your diesel heating system all night long. On average, if you run a system for seven hours, you're only gonna use about two liters of fuel. Is it worth saving five pounds to wake up at four o'clock in the morning? For me, not really. Now talking about a good night's sleep leads me to my next very valid point. Let's get back to the Land Rover and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So what I'm talking about is fuel pumps. Generally, when you get a cheaper system, the Chinese systems, and even some of the branded systems, You'll get everything fitted on your vehicle. You'll get to your camping spot. You'll put it on and it will start going. T -t 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 -t. That noise is the fuel pump pushing the fuel through to your diesel heater. And there are a couple of different ways that you can basically get past that. One thing I did when I had a cheaper system, Chinese system fitted to my vehicle is you can get a fuel pump. I believe it's called a a whisper light fuel pump. Now, that gets rid of that noise quite considerably. The only other thing that you can do is bite the bullet and get something a little bit more expensive, like the Ebus Backer, and enjoy a quiet night's sleep. How much is that worth to you? Now, I might sound like I'm hating on Chinese systems, and the truth is, I'm not. I've used them myself, and I get it. We can't all afford a thousand pounds for a diesel heater system. I certainly can't, and I've never paid that sort of money. I've been lucky enough to either buy branded systems on the vehicle already, or I've fitted Chinese and figured out a way to upgrade them. Whatever your budget can afford is something that's going to lead your decision, and don't be put off by buying Chinese. Just do your research, get online, and figure out who the best sellers are and where to get them from. Just take into consideration that you're probably not gonna be able to get it serviced and you're gonna find it really hard to find parts. So even though you're spending cheap, you may end up spending twice. The top three don'ts when you're getting a diesel heater system. Bigger isn't always better. Don't fit a four or five kilowatt system to a vehicle this big, because all you're gonna do is cook yourself. Make sure that the standard starter battery that you have fitted in your car is at least 110 amp hour, so you don't absolutely kill it if you're running this system off just a one battery car. 
And number three, the most important thing. If you do decide to fit the system on your car yourself, or you go to view any sort of self-build at all, make sure that the exhaust is fitted off the side of the vehicle. Bad fitters will fit the exhaust literally under the chassis, and that is a really quick way to burn yourself to the ground. Would I get a diesel system fitted in my car? Absolutely. Would I get a Chinese one fitted in my car? Absolutely, no issues at all. But just make sure if you are going to see a self-built camper van, which there are gonna be hundreds popping up at the moment, that someone with some sort of brain cell has fitted it. Otherwise, you'll just be a glowing beacon in the British countryside. Now, I haven't shown you any photos or video of my diesel heater, just jump online. This is a S-Backer D2 system, and there are currently some on eBay retailing for about 250 to 300 pounds secondhand. In terms of the amount of room you're gonna need, they do fit into relatively small spaces. We're lucky enough to have the 110s, the bigger defenders, so they've got a second row of seats, and the heater system fits just under there, out the way, doesn't bother anybody. If you've inadvertently found yourself enjoying my video, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and drop me a comment. I would love to know what you want to find out a little bit about, whether it's camping, ideas for videos, things about my cars, or the hotel which I'm currently trying to rescue. Anyway, my arms are getting pretty tired from holding this camera, so I'm going to jump back in the car, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.